Hi folks, welcome to this short video on share splits. So this is a new topic in our course for us, so the, it, probably the best thing to do is to talk a little bit about what is a share split, how can it affect a share price, and why companies even do it in the first place. So all a share split is, it's a decision by the board of directors when they decide they want to increase the number of shares out there and they want to issue more shares to current shareholders, but they don't want to do it as a dividend, they want to just issue more shares to the existing shareholders. So how would this work? Let's say the company decides they want to issue a two for one split. Usually they say it two colon one is two uh, for every share you have you're going to get one more so that you'll now have two. So if they want to issue a two for one share split, all that means is that for every share you have, you're going to get one more such that now you have two of them. So every shareholder with one share is going to get an additional one. So if a company had 100,000 shares before the split, in a two for one split, now they're going to have 200,000 shares issued and they're all going to be issued to the same people. Now, is the share price going to be affected by the split? So if I now have twice the number of shares out there, what does that do to my share price? Well, yeah, it's going to affect it. In fact, it's going to reduce it. So the thing with a share split is that companies aren't creating what we say any new equity. All they're doing is cutting the price of the shares in half if it's a two-for-one split. So let's look at an example. Let's say in our two-for-one split example, we say the price will be halved. So if a company had 100,000 shares that were issued at $30, so let's say those 100,000 shares were issued at $30 a share, then after the two-for-one split, they're going to have twice as many shares but at half the price. So if you look at it mathematically, the reason why we say there's no new equity created is because the balance in the common share account in the equity section of the balance sheet is going to be no different. Before the split, we had 100,000 shares at $30 a share. So we have $3 million in common in the common share account on our books. Now all you're going to have are 200,000 shares, but now you're going to cut the value in half and they're going to trade in the marketplace at $15 a share. So that's still $3 million. So you'll notice that unlike the share dividend with the share split, there is no change in the balance in the common share account. With the share dividend, we were issuing more shares and we were increasing the value of the common share account. But in this case, we're not doing that. Why do companies even want to do a share split? Why would they even do it? The most popular reason is because maybe a company is seeing that its share price is climbing too high and maybe there's no buying. It's just like you guys. If you went to a store and you saw an article of clothing that you wanted to buy and it was 100 bucks, you might say, well, gee, I'm going to wait till maybe it's 40 bucks and then buy it, right? But you're going to wait. So you're not going to buy that product until it comes down in price. Shares kind of work the same way. If the companies are seeing um, their price levels of their shares maybe too high or beyond the price level of similar companies in their sector, in their industry sector, so say it's uh, manufacturing sector, right? And there's a company whose shares are trading, say it's Ford, right? And let's say their shares have gone up, uh, say they're trading at $100 a share. I don't know what they are. But if everybody else's are trading at, say, $60 a share, say General Motors is trading at $60 a share, then what's going to happen? If people want to be invested in the manufacturing sector in the automotive industry, they might decide, well, General Motors shares are cheaper, so I'm going to buy those instead of the Ford ones that are too high. So maybe Ford Motor Company might decide, well, maybe we need to split our shares, lower the market price of the shares, because now it'll get people buying, right? So it makes the shares more affordable to small investors, so maybe they can afford to buy the shares, right? Now, the other thing we notice, and you have to think about this even from a retail perspective, a share split can also re result in a share price increase over time following the decrease. Why is that? After the split, now that the shares are priced lower, right, so in our example, maybe the shares were trading at $30, but because we split them, they're now trading at $15, what's going to happen? Now more people are going to go in and buy it at the lower price. So eventually, what will happen? People will bid up the price of the shares. You learn something like this in economics, I'm sure. So what's going to happen when the price comes down? 
people will start buying the, the shares and that will create a new market or an additional market for the shares. People will want to buy it. So immediately after the decrease, say in our example from $30 a share to $15 a share, over time we'll see that price go up. And that's how the investor makes money because they buy them at a lower price and they hang on to them. Buying happens. People keep buying shares at the lower price and it eventually drives the price of the shares up. So now let's look at an example to see how the share split works. In our example here, we've got a company known as Vector Limited. And Vector Limited has the following equity section at December 31st. It's got common shares. It's only authorized to issue 100,000 shares, but they've got 28,000 that are issued and outstanding with shareholders. They've got retained earnings at 85,000, so they've got total equity of 561,000. Now, the day after, Vector declared and distributed a three-for-one split. So what we want you to do is we want you to do an equity section at December 31st and at January 1st after the split and compare them to see what the differences are. So let's have a look. This here, this data here, all I'm doing is taking it down here to the solution. So if I look at what I had before the split, what did I have? I had common shares, 100,000 authorized, 28,000 issued and outstanding for 476, and the retained earnings, so I had total equity of 561. So now what does that tell me? That tells me that the average issue price, so on average, the shareholders gave me $17 a share, on average. So that was the average market price throughout the year. But after the split, what's going to happen? Now, if it's a three-for-one split, that means for each share that you have, you're going to have twice as many. So for each share you have, you're going to get two more. So now you've got three shares for every one you used to have. So now how many shares are issued in outstanding? Now what do I have? I have 84,000 shares. Or what I say is I say this is the same as what? 28,000 times 3. So this is the same as 28,000 times 3. I'm wondering if I can just type that in there, if it'll let me do it. Now nah, it won't. It's sticking here. Let me see if I could do this. Yeah, this is the same as, I'm just putting the calculation in here. This wouldn't actually go in the equity section. So this would give us 84 thousand shares. So in other words, for every share you hold, you get two more. So in total, you've got three shares more than you had. You get three shares more, right? So you get 84,000 shares outstanding. So whenever you're trying to figure out the number of shares issued and outstanding, if it's a three for one split, you take the number of shares and multiply it by three. If it's a two for one split, you take the number of shares issued and outstanding and multiply it by two. If it's a five for one split, you take the number of shares issued and outstanding and multiply them by five. And then you get the value here. But notice that there was no new equity created. Why? Same reason up here. All we said here is that now, with a two-for-one split, you had double the shares at half the price. So there's no new equity in the common share account. Same thing here. Because now what's happening? 84,000 shares that are issued, right? The equity hasn't changed in the company. The shares are now trading at one-third of this price, which is $5.67 a share. So what you had before, if you looked at it this way, before you had 28,000 shares issued, and that meant that you, and that would have been at, at $17 a share, and that gave us what? 476, right? Now you have 84,000 shares. issued at one third of the price, which is 567, and that's still going to give you 476. So all the company is trying to do is they're not trying to create any new equity here, or like any new common share balance or increase their common share balance and the dollar balance. What they're trying to do is create more of a market for their shares by going in and issuing more shares or splitting the existing shares so that they decrease the market value to spur buying. 
so then more people will buy. But notice that the total dollar value of the common share equity doesn't change. So what you notice, this is the rule that whenever you have a share split, there's no new equity created. So there's no share in the contributed capital accounts, and there was no change in the retained earnings account. It's not a share dividend, it's different, right? So when a share split is declared and issued, there's no journal entry. Why? Because none of the account balances are changing. But you do need to use a note disclosure to state the number of new shares that you've issued. So in this case, how many new shares would we have issued? We would have issued the number of new shares is going to be equal to 84,000 that we have now, less 28,000 that we had, and that would be how many new shares? That would be 56 thousand new shares, right? That's how many new shares you have. So all you need to do is state the number of new shares that you're distributing. So you would say in your note, we had 28,000 shares, we're distributing an additional 56,000 shares, so now we're going to have 84,000 shares out there. It's all your note would have to say. And the only effect of a share split on the company accounts is the change in the number of common shares, not the dollar amount. Again, the number of shares changed to 84 from 28, but notice the total common share equity did not change. Okay, so that didn't change. So what you might want to do now is go into your course and check your handout or your script that goes along with the video, and I directed you to another video in this on this topic that you might find helpful. So this concludes our lesson on share splits.